Hi, everybody. Um, David Mall asked me to talk about how to win with a Holland Lop at the ARBA convention. And I sort of had to laugh when he asked because, I mean, I never really thought about it. I never thought that there was a science to it. But there actually is a little bit of science to it, and we'll go through that. Um, I am an ARBA judge and a standards committee member. I've gotten the Lifetime Judge Award, and I've been inducted in the Holland Lop Hall of Fame. What's more interesting, let's see if I can make this turn. Oh, that's not working. There it goes. Is that I actually have a lot of ARBA convention wins, which sort of shocked me. I went back and looked. My first convention was back in 1984. Um, I have missed two, one due to a family death, and of course, this year due to COVID, but I've been to all the others since 84. And I basically have won best or best opposite breed about 32 to 33 percent of the time, which is crazy. I had no idea. So I had to go back and think about what is the science to win? And there is some science to it. I'm not actually sure how to turn the pages. So after doing a little soul searching, I had to decide what does it take to win? And I came up with five things. First of all, you have to have a good Holland. If you don't have a good Holland, you're obviously not going to win. That's sort of basic. But then you have to have something that puts you above all the rest of the rabbits at convention. Our breed, the Hollands, are one of the largest breeds shown at a convention. So you're going to see classes of 50 to 150. And when you're in a class of 150, you darn well had better stand out before the above the rest if you're going to win. You have to have a rabbit at the right age. You have to have a rabbit in good condition. And I'm telling you, you have to have an awful lot of luck. So let's start with the standard and just do a brief review. Um, not that I don't think you guys know this, but I figure it's still good to review it. Our standard has been the same for probably 15 plus years as far as point spread. There's basically 42 points on head, ears, and crown, or the front end of the rabbit, and 42 points on body, legs, and bone, or the back end of the rabbit. There's only five points on condition, and seven on fur. And while those five and seven points don't sound like much, in a class of 100, they make a huge difference. This is just a picture of a rabbit showing that the points break at the neck. You have 42 points above that neck and 42 points below the neck. Um, basically, the rabbit with the least faults wins, which brings us to a concept of generic Holland Lops. I used to have a friend that would enter a very generic solid senior doe at every convention, and it would always place in the top 10. And it wasn't exciting, but it didn't have any faults. And the way our standard works is we judge against 100 points and we take off points for faults. If you don't have any faults, you're going to place up there. These rabbits would sometimes even win first place because they were the rabbits with the least amount of faults, but they rarely ever go on to win best or best opposite breed. You're going to need more than a, a good rabbit to win. So then I went back to, okay, of the standard, when I judge, what defines the breed? And as far as I'm concerned, the most important part to the breed is the top line. And we actually, when you get your new standard, which will be coming out hopefully soon, it hasn't gone to print yet, but it has been proofed, you're going to find that there's a sixth body type in there, which is for high head mount breeds. So finally, the Hollands and the Jersey Woolies and the Fuzzy Lops, et cetera, are not thrown in with compact breeds, which have their heads held on the table. We're going to be high head set breeds. These happen to be three junior does that are in my barn. They all have high head sets. The one thing I want to impress to you is that top line or high headset is structural. You can't teach this. I see people on Facebook all the time saying, got to get my rabbit out and teach it to pose. I'm telling you, you might be able to kind of torment it and get it to pose up, but it should have the same headset in its cage as it does on the show table. And if you were to look at these three does in their cage, they don't look very different than what they do right here in these pictures. You cannot teach top line. It is structural. If you look at it this way, which is a little easier way to see it, you have potatoes for bodies and you have apples for heads. They're hooked together by a neck, which is this little red toothpick thing. If the toothpick is at a 45 degree angle, hooking the body to the head, you have a high headset. If you have a low headset, it's down low to the ground, parallel to the ground. And really, if you go back, and I'm not sure I know how to go back on this. I guess I can't. Um, if you go back to those little rabbits, you'll see they all have that 45 degree headset. And what defines it is that they're really short and extremely deep at the shoulder. There's no dips, there's no extra length, they're just short and deep. And I know you could try to teach rabbits to pose up, 
But in reality, if they need to have their heads held up, they have low headsets, and, and that's not correct. It's structural. The head on the rabbits are 42, I'm sorry, 24 points. Um, and this is kind of important. I know fuzzy lops have 30 points. They actually have more points on head than any other breed. But 24 is still a lot of points just on the head. That's not the ear, it's not the eye, that's not anything else, that's just the head. When I look at a Holland, I look at the head to body ratio. I want one part head to two parts body. You know, 10 years ago, we saw one part head to three parts body, and maybe 15 years ago, we saw one part head to four parts body. The rabbits are shorter now, and we are requiring a larger head. The standard has not changed, but we have developed a Holland that has a larger head in proportion to its body. Head shape is important as well. You want a head that's round in all directions. One way, if, if you really can't tell if you've got a good head, you can take a picture of your rabbit and draw a triangle on it. If you put a line between the two eyes and the lines from the corner of the eye to the nose, the bar that is between the two eyes should be wider than, or longer than the bars that are down from the eye to the nose. And you'll see some rabbits with narrow heads, that bar between the eyes is very narrow as well, and the other bars are longer. So you want this to be a wide at the eye rabbit. You also want full jowls, and jowls are this part, let's see if I can get my pointer to work, here we go, or the cheek right here, this full cheek. And you will find Hollands that are very flat in their cheeks, and they really don't have very pleasing heads. So round, think round in all directions. Ears, you have 10 points on ears. Um, ears can be broken down, it's not just 10 points and do they have an ear, but substance of ear. You want thick ears like basset hound ears. You want the shape of the ears to be round at the tips and not pointed. You want them not to be too long. You, you want them to be well furred. And I see so many Hollands out there where you can actually see the skin of the ear underneath the fur. Those ears should be well covered with fur. All three of these rabbits have excellent substance of ear. The little guy in the middle, his ears don't caress his face as they should because his crown's a little narrow. But I love the fact that that ear is so thick and so round and so well shaped and so well furred. And this is more what you want to get as far as ideal. Um, the others are good too, but I think he just typifies to me what a Holland should have as far as ears. Crown, well, let's talk about crown. I'm probably the worst breeder to talk about crown because I probably have the worst, some of the worst crowns in my, my barn. Um, all the rabbits in this presentation besides one are from my barn. And I had to look for these um, to get decent crowns. Crown has four attributes, front to back width, side to side width, position on the head, and depth. If you look at the rabbit in the middle, it probably has the best crown. Um, that crown is positioned properly. If you look at the ear opening, which is right here, this little bar right here, that bar should be equal to the eye right here. And his really is right there. If you look at this guy here, his ear opening right here is above his eye. And this guy here is just a little teeny bit above his eye. But this guy is near perfect on where that crown is positioned. You want good front to back width. And what you're gonna get with a crown that has good front to back width is you're gonna have a really wide ear opening right here. And you can really see it on this little otter buck. You can see it here as well on this tort on the left although his crown is slipping off the back of his head just a little bit, but he's got a great ear opening, opposed to this little guy on the right, where his ear isn't as opened as well as it could be. It's a little bit narrow right here. Um, so we've talked to front to back width. We've talked to oh, side to side width, which is where it's positioned on the eye. We've talked a little bit about the position on the head. What happens if it falls off the head, you get what's called a slip crown. The eye should really just peek out from that ear here. This eye peeks out really well from that, where that crown positions that ear. If you look on this next slide, you're gonna see this guy here, or girl. She really has a slip crown. And what you'll see is there's a ton of area here between the eye and the ear. That's a badly slipped crown. And this is probably a very common fault out there. I think a lot of people are working on this um, and hopefully we'll get better. Um, interestingly, as far as side to side with the crown, I have found that as you get shorter rabbits, the side to side with the crown does get a little narrower and you're gonna fight that. Uh, I haven't figured out how to fix that yet. So, you know, stay tuned. This rabbit here in the middle has a good wrap or good side to side with the crown. You can see that those ear openings are right there by that eye. 
And this rabbit over here, this rabbit happens to be McMolly, Eleanor McMolly, who won Best to Breed at a convention. It's the, the only rabbit that I don't own that's in my presentation, but excellent, excellent crown. She has beautiful front to back width, beautiful side to side width, great positioning and great depth. It really doesn't get any better than this. And I have to commend um, the Jennings because most of their rabbits have this beautiful crown shape. Really, really nice and very genetic for their herd. Bone, let's talk about bone. We have 10 points on their standard on bone. These pictures are from the Holland Lop guidebook. And I'll tell you, rarely do I ever, as a judge, see bone like this. Uh, you have a junior with really short limb over here. The rabbit's foot is about half as wide as is long. Here you have junior with really short, wide limb and a senior the same. In the real world, I just don't think we see this as often as we should, and I think it's something we need to work on. More often we're seeing bone like this, where you have a senior with longer limb, more refined bone, the chest V's up like this. Here you've got really long legs. The width of bone is not that bad here, but you still, again, have a really narrow V chest. Sometimes you see weak ankles or flipper feet where the bone comes down and forms an L shape. That's a severe fault. I would not keep rabbits like that in my herd. You really don't want that. Uh, it's hard to get rid of. So 10 points on bone, more than crown. Crown's only eight. It's all important. So we kind of looked at the standard of perfection and you sort of have an idea what a good Holland looks like. But is winning a convention that simple as having a good rabbit? There are a heck of a lot of good rabbits out there. We walk the rows at convention quite frequently and walk up and down and you'll see a lot of them. It's just not that simple as just to have a good haul and to win. It takes more than that. Winning is also a moving target. What won back in 2005 is not going to win in 2020. Uh, if you look at this rabbit that won in 2005 compared to the one that won in 2014, you see a rabbit with a narrower chest, a longer limb, a little weaker ankle. He's a little narrower overall. Crown is a little bit more slipped here. The head could be a little fuller. And admittedly, this is a junior buck, but I still would like to see a little more jowl on him, opposed to what you see winning in 2014. The standard has not changed in over 15 years, but what you see winning has changed. The rabbits have gotten better. And if you're breeding rabbits back like they were 10 years ago and not moving forward, you're not gonna win at a convention. You really have to stay current. Okay, we're gonna to come to a new concept. It, this is a concept called something that puts you above the rest. It's kind of interesting. Um, it takes more than being a nicely typed Holland to win. You have to stand out above all the other ones in the class. And about uh, probably four or five years ago, I was talking to Doug King. And Doug has a fantastic, phenomenal winning record in Minirex. He's won a lot in Minirex. And what he was saying is, you know, Chris, I have to stay ahead of the pack. I always have to have something that I'm breeding that makes my rabbits nicer than anybody else has. And it was sort of an interesting concept because it's really true. It's one thing to have a nice rabbit, but if you have something that no one else has, maybe you have bone like those bone pitchers where I said that they were very difficult to get that kind of bone on a rabbit, or maybe you have that perfect crown like that McMolly rabbit. Those are points that will distinguish you from the rest. And when a judge sees those, on a good rabbit with no other faults, that's an easy pick. That's an easy one to put in the back and say, I like this rabbit, I'm gonna place it up in the top and it might win the class. But you do have something, you have to have something that puts you above the rest. Especially, you look at our junior classes, our junior classes are classes of over 100. I think they've hit 150, 160 or more. When you're doing that many rabbits in the class, I mean, you have to have something that makes you memorable. That judge that's judging has to fall in love with your rabbit or you're not gonna win. Uh, way back when, the thing that made you stand out about the rest was correct head mount and top line. Now most rabbits at conventions have correct head mount and top line. And then it was massiveness and heavy bone. And we still see some without that, but we're seeing more and more of that nowadays. So I had to figure out for me, if I want to win, how am I going to maintain the cutting edge? What am I going to do that puts me above the rest? And what I do may not be what you do. It's what I do. And I'm going to tell you what I, I'm planning on doing. I'm focusing on loins, deep loins, like Florida white loins, full wide chests, and short rabbits. I really like short rabbits. So short, deep rabbits. And these are a few um, young rabbits that I have. This poor little chestnut agouti, its little foot is hidden, which is too bad. Um, 
the main thing for me that I want to distinguish my herd at is I want hindquarters de with depth to equal width. And you hear that a lot in the commercial breeds, and there's absolutely no reason we can't have that in our Hollands. The one thing I find with, with judging is we have nice width, but we have shallow loins or catchy hips. And honestly, because I'm an all breed judge, I hate that. Um, if you want to work on this, my suggestion to you is to get a ruler and measure your rabbits. Measure the depth of body here with the peak over the hip down here compared to the width of the hindquarters. It should be equal. You can use calipers to do it as well. I think you're going to find that you are grossly flat compared to your width of body. Most Holland breeders are, and I think this is the new Verizon. If you don't get this concept, my advice is go find a Florida white breeder with a, that has good loins and feel their rabbit. They feel very, very different in the rear than a Holland lump does. And there is no reason that we can't get that on our rabbits. All three of these rabbits here all have little loins on them that are fairly well filled. They round properly, which is nice. Um, and have great depth to width balance, which I'm really excited about. Age is the number three on our list of what it takes to win. Um, Hollands need a 6'8 class. I've been saying that for years. If you have a six-month-old or to an eight-month-old, you're not going to win even at a local show. To win the senior butt class at a convention, a Holland's going to be two to three years of age. That's because they have the, the mass, the fullness of skull, that head, and the development that it takes. To win the junior classes, you're going to need to be five to six months of age. Closer to six, the better. Um, a three-month-old rabbit may be very cute. But trust me, it's going to fall apart, staying at convention before the judging, and by the time it gets there, it is not going to win. Why waste it? Hollands are like wine. They get better with time. Why show them and ruin them before they, they prime out? Age is a super important concept, and a lot of people still don't get that. Condition. We talked about this briefly before. The five elusive points on condition and seven points on fur. This is so important because at the top of the class, those rabbits are well conditioned and they're well furred. This starts weeks and sometimes even months before the show. You really need to plan, especially if you're breeding juniors for older rabbits, you need to know how your condition works and when you prime out. Um, you can use finishing products. I like Circulate, which is for Meal and More. Two months or more before the show, I'll use a half a scoop daily, which is more than they recommend, but I'm telling you, the lysine in it finishes them so they have amazing flesh. Um, there's other projects you can use that work. I mean, here in California, we have Barbie Brown's um, mix. We have, there's this YQ2 or YQ something there. There's docs. There's a whole bunch of them. The catch is you're going to have to find something that works with your feed and keeps your Hollands firm and flesh. Um, I can't guarantee if you buy Circulate that it's going to do for you what it does for me. It works great with my feed. Um, but you're going to have to play with it. And I would suggest playing with it a long time before a convention because you need to get those rabbits finished before they even think of leaving. They should be finished actually by the time you're entering your rabbits. Traveling to the show, huge piece to winning. A lot of us go really far to conventions. I live in California, which is on the coast. Oftentimes I'm traveling half across the United States to get to a convention. I always start with at least two ounces of extra weight on my rabbit. That means some of them leave the house weighing 4-2. I know they're going to lose probably that on the way. If, I'm, if I was traveling by car, and I don't usually go by car, I would give them time to eat and drink because they need to eat and drink to keep that flesh. There's nothing worse than having a rabbit in a car for 24 hours or more and shaking the flesh right off of them because you will do that. Um, I usually fly. I find that the less time of stress on travel, the better. I know flying is also stressful because you have the landing, which is a little traumatic, and the taking off, which is a little traumatic, but they seem to do better than traveling in a car. The other thing you can consider is there's a product called Immunize Pellets, which you can give daily for a week or two before, which just helps them have a little more immunity to stress so they don't stress on the trip because you really do not want them to stress because stress will take any flesh that you put on them right off of them, and then there goes your showing. At the show, at the show, I prefer to feed exactly the way I do at home. You walk the hull and lump rows. You have to kind of laugh because every known treat to rabbits is in those cages. And yet when you walk the New Zealand cages or the French lock cages or the California cages, they have food and they have water. Um, the last couple of times at convention, I've done this and it's worked so much better. I either give water from home or bottled water and feed, and that's it. 
unless they're, they're stressing and they're not eating. If they go off feed, that's another story. But normally they'll do pretty well just being maintained with what they get from home. I actually pack hay from home. I give them a little bit of their hay that they're used to getting every day, and it works well. If they go up feed, that's another issue. Maybe I'll throw in some shredded wheat or whatever else I happen to have on hand. But they really need their pellets, and they really need good, clean water. Um, interesting story. There's a new product called Gut Pro Paste, which I tried using this last convention, which is prebiotics and pro, uh, probiotics and pre and probiotics. And it just helps the gut both um, digest the food and absorb the, the nutrients. And it works really good. Um, I was giving this to all my rabbits at the last convention last year. I had two rabbits that left the home at 4.2 pounds. They were four pounds when they got there. And by the time they were judged, thanks to Gut Pro Paste, they were 4.3 pounds. It kept the weight on them real good. And they were both DQ'd, which was kind of funny. So now I know that. Um, so I'll be a little more careful going forward. Immunize as well will help keep condition on your rabbits. I think doing anything to help stabilize the immunity is always a good thing. Conventions are super stressful. There's lots of lights. There's lots of noise. It's, it's a tiny cage compared to what they're used to. They're on shavings. Maybe they're on wire at home. I doubt many people grow them on shavings. There's just so many changes that they can stress pretty easily. At the big show. Okay, this is, this is a really key thing. Make sure ahead of time your rabbits used to being handled by other people. Um, if I'm not showing a lot, and I won't always show my convention rabbits ahead of time, maybe one show to get them used to going to a show, but I'll have people touch them. They need to get used to be touched by other people besides you. Otherwise, when they get to convention, they're going to have some stranger yank them out of the cage, throw them in a, another cage, and some judge yank them out again. Do you think they're going to like that? No, trust me, they're not. You really need to get them used to it. And again, what I would do too is to have them go to at least one show several weeks before the convention so that they kind of get an idea what showing's like if they haven't been shown before. I do like them to sit at home for a few weeks before just to get them. I like to get a little bit over finished for that show. You should groom your lab at rabbit's coat before you go. They should be in pretty good condition. And, and that starts a month or two months before the show. Um, you really don't want to have to be there at convention trying to work out all the dead coat. It's easier to do it when you're at home. I would always arrive 24 to 48 hours before judging. Let your rabbit settle in. It's a new environment. They are not used to this. It's totally strange. Um, some rabbits are, you've like alpha males, right? And if they get cooped next to another alpha male, they're going to get agitated. You need to get them settled down. Um, sometimes I'll use some cardboard for cage dividers if they don't seem to like their neighbors. Other times they're totally happy with the rabbits that they're cooped next to. But I try to be cognizant on how well they're doing in the cage. I want those rabbits happy because when they go up in that table, they have to be bright eyed and bushy tailed. If they're not happy, trust me, they're not all of a sudden going to get happy when they get hauled up to be judged. So here you go. You want your rabbit to be bright eyed and alert to be noticed. And that is so, so important. The biggest part, I think, of winning at a convention, and I've won a lot, um, is luck. And, you know, I, I, you think it's all these other things, but there's a large portion of it that's luck. Um, you have judge preference. Maybe I'm showing a chin in the, broker, in the solid junior doe class, and maybe the judge I get hates colored rabbits. They only want torts to win. Trust me, they're not going to give that chin a, a big time of day. You don't know if the carrier that took your rabbit out of the cage hooked its foot on the cage and twisted it a little. You don't know if they scruffed it or if they were a little rough in handling it. You don't know if they got thrown in another cage before they got on the table. I mean, all that adds to luck, the luck of the draw. You want them. You want to get a judge that, that you will, will like your rabbit. You want to get a carrier that's going to be gentle with your rabbit. Um, place in the class. You have 100 rabbits. Those that come up first are going to be up there a really long time, and they're going to get tired. The other thing is if you have 100 rabbits in the class, you've got to make a cut for your no-shows. Where that judge makes that cut is arbitrary, and hopefully they include your rabbit in the cut. Hopefully they don't change that cut as they get further on down the class. Rabbits do get tired. Rabbits will show better first time they're up than, when, than later on in the class. Um, and there's no way to control this. It's just absolutely luck. It used to be the cards came up alphabetically and I'm a Z. I would always hope that I'd be at the end, but then they shuffle the cards and I'm all over the place, so. Anyway, your rabbit basically has 30 seconds to shine. And that's it, just 30 seconds. And you have to hope that it's alert and bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and it stands out above the rest. 
Um, I do want to talk a little bit about luck as well. Um, Jamie Wardlow and I showed a lot together over the years, and we would always go to the convention, and we would take our very best rabbit and share it with each other. She would bring out her very best rabbit, and I would bring out my very best rabbit, and we'd set them on the table, and we'd look at them, and we would just oogle over them and go, oh my God, these are so awesome. These are definitely going to win. We have best and best opposites sewn up. These are absolutely gorgeous. And of all the years we did that, those rabbits always no placed. And you have to laugh. And we won. We won with other rabbits. But it is a little bit of the luck of the draw. You know, we always say crap, convention's a crapshoot, and it is somewhat. But I have to think back to that because it is pretty funny that that happened so many times. Um, let's see what else we have here because there was another thing I wanted to talk about. Oh, the E-Series girls. Oh, my God, this is a great story. Way back when I had a buck named Ajax that won Best in Show at convention, I had three E-series girls. They all had E names. There was Esme and two other ones. And uh, I knew, Jamie wasn't there this year, but I knew those E-series girls were going to win. They were just the cat's pajamas. They were awesome. They were beautifully finished. They were furred. They had it all. They stood out, in my mind, anyway. So I was judging Mini Rex with um, Johnny Hausner and Armando. And as the day went on, people came and said, oh, Chris, your senior buck won the first place in the senior buck class. I went, oh, no, no, no. The ones I'm going to win with are the senior dose. Those E-series girls are hot. They are so good. And day goes on. One E-series girl gets no place. Two E-series girl gets no place. And three E-series girl gets no place. What happened? It's the luck of the draw. Were they beautiful rabbits? Yes. Somehow they didn't get up there. And in the end, Ajax did win, and he won Best of Breed and went on to win Best in Show. Uh, and I had to eat my words because I kind of, you know, dissed him a little bit when I was going, oh, it was those E-series girls. So I lived to eat those words. But um, we do always say that conventions are a little bit of a crapshoot. So what you need to win, you got to have a good rabbit. And there's a lot of good rabbits out there. So you have to have something that makes you better than all the other good rabbits. It doesn't have to be loin like I'm working on. It could be beautiful crowns. It could be something else but you have to have something that makes you stand out above the rest because the classes are big and you've got 30 seconds to shine. Don't bother any young seniors or young juniors. They're not going to win. Why waste them and take them all the way to a convention? That seems silly. You have to have great condition and that's herdsmanship. You need to work on that. And that starts way before the convention. And most of all, you do have to have luck to win. I, 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 I've won more than a lot of people. And, and for me to say, I've won with rabbits I like. I've won with rabbits I don't like. I've won with rabbits I've sold. I've run with rabbits I sold after the judging. But um, there is there's a strong element of luck. The biggest thing, though, that I want to say is conventions aren't just for showing. If you're going just to show, you're missing a big point of what a convention's about. It's time to visit with other breeders and handle other rabbits. Um, you'll learn so much with from these discussions. There's just so much visiting that goes on. And it is the, the most fun part of the convention. And trust me, if you do this, you're gonna have more fun and be better prepared to come back the following year because you're gonna get a better idea for what other rabbits are out there. You show in your little area of the country, most of us aren't showing all over the United States. Um, it's nice to see what else is out there. So I think that's an important piece as well. And then finally, the biggest piece is have fun. You know, you're in a place with a lot of people that share your hobby and, and your passion. Enjoy it. Share it with other people. Have a good time. And it really is a really fun time. So that's it for me. And if you guys have questions, I'll entertain them.